Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the RPI P28D Plus Pixel Hat from Hanson Electronics. What does it do? So this is a hat or an add-on board that sits on top of a Raspberry Pi and gives you a number of pixel outputs. In the case of this hat, dependent on your viewpoint, it either gives you two, three or four outputs. It also has a real-time clock on board. So if you're putting a, a Raspberry Pi out somewhere where it needs to, uh, to start a show, but it hasn't got a network time source, then this will be good because it will keep the time in check for you. And it also has a DMX output. So you can run thing, things like moving heads or smoke machines, uh, stuff like that. So let's take a closer look at the board and talk about the various connections. So the first ones that we've got here are the four connections across the side here. Now these are the power connections. The first one here is the input for the power to the board and the power to the Pi underneath. So you can power the Raspberry Pi itself via this hat. You don't need to supply it with its own power supply or anything like that. Now this hat has options for either five volts or 12 volts input uh, to match the power supply that's feeding your pixels. As you may know, the Pi's are only five volts. So if you need to run it from the 12 volt connection here, then the hat has what's called a little buck converter, a little voltage uh, drop device on the back of the board that's gonna lower the voltage from 12 down to five volts to power the Pi. So there's a little buck converter, a little voltage regulator thing there. Whilst we're on the bottom of the board, um, here we've got the battery socket uh, for the CR2032 battery uh, that's used to power the real-time clock. So you can unplug the Pi. The 2032 will keep the time chip running. And then when you turn the Pi back on, it will get its time from, uh, from there. So back on the top, and we've then got three separate power inputs to match the three pixel outputs. Now, most boards have just a single input. Uh, this one has multiple, which is, which is good because it means you can run different voltages of pixels from the same board. So you might have a string of five volts and a string of 12. They can both run uh, independently from this one board. So you've just got to feed different power supplies in and then the relevant power will be mapped across to the pixel outputs on the other side. Coming across the board then we've got three fuses for the three pixel outputs. Uh, these come with seven and a half amp fuses in them so they're good for quite a few pixels um, and it keeps the board safe if something goes wrong so you can just replace the fuse. Uh, as normal, they're standard sort of automotive type fuses on this board. We've then got the three pixel outputs. Now you'll notice immediately that one of them has is a four wire output and two are three wire outputs. And that's where the fun comes in. So this board was designed back in the early days of FPP and before FPP6, you could only run two WS2811, WS281X style pixel strings from a Raspberry Pi. They used the PWM outputs on the chip um, and there's only two of them. So that was it, that's the way it worked. So these two ports are for the WS281X pixels. And there was a third port which could be used for WS280X, like WS2801 style pixels that have a clock output as well as the data output. 
So you've got positive and negative data and clock on those pixels. Hence the four wires. But with the uh, release of FPP6, the new DPI pixels code has come into play. And it's now possible, of course, to run more than two strings of pixels from a Raspberry Pi. In fact, I think it's up to 24, if I remember correctly. So, uh, handily, the, the data and clock outputs on the 28, on the uh, 28D Plus can be repurposed from 2801 type style pixels to two lots of WS2811 style pixels. So we have the data out of the data, and we also have a second data feed coming out of the clock. It does mean you'll have to do a bit of juggling with power, um, but there is a data signal there. And we'll demonstrate it in just a moment. So that's the, the pixel outputs. The last remaining connector is the DMX output. It's an eight-way, eight-pole connector, an RJ45 style thing, um, much the same as your ethernet designed to go and drive your DMX devices. Now, the DMX, the, the driver I see for it is, is sat on the board in a little socket there. So should you mess something up and uh, it all goes horribly wrong, you can replace the driver I see if you need to. So that sums up the connectivity on the board. Now I'm gonna switch over to one that I've wired up earlier. And, uh, and we'll run through the setup in FPP. We, I've brought in power from an, a Meanwell RSP320 power supply. Because I needed four power inputs onto the board, I've used another Hanson product, the PDIST1 power distro board, which gives up to five fused outputs um, and plugs straight into the front of your Meanwell uh, RSP320 or LRS350. This one is running at 12 volts because I'm going to be playing with 12 volt pixels in a moment. And so I've connected it up to the pixel inputs and I've connected it up to the 12 volt side of the uh, power input for the panel for the uh, board. So that's running my instance of FPP. Now I've got some pixels ready to go. I've got four strings of pixels, uh, just, just 10 pixels in each little cl cluster here, but good for demos. So I'm gonna plug these into the, the pixel outputs. I'm doing this live, the thing's powered on, but I've never broken one yet, so uh, but it's the first time for everything. Uh, not recommended, don't try this at home or whatever they say. Now these last two strings of pixels, I've wired into the into the four-way socket here. So I've got I've joined my power and ground are spread out two into each one, and then I've got one data going into clock and one going into data. So that can now plug into my Pi as well. There we go. So we're ready. We're all we're plugged up on that point of view. So let's test our pixels. Now I've got my instance of FPP up and running here. And as you can see, we've got a Panels R Us logo up in the top corner. Now that has happened automatically because the P28D Plus has an EEPROM on board. So it can automatically tell FPP that it's plugged in, that it's, that it's here. Um, and that logo is just telling us that it's connected. If I go into input output setup and channel outputs. We can see that the channel outputs has already set itself up at 428D, which is great. So that's ready to go. We can also see that it's defaulted to the, stand, the old standard for these hats in that it's given us two WS2811 outputs and a single WS2801 output. Now that's not what I want to use on here today. I want to set it all up for WS2811 pixels. So we need to just change the Cape config across to DPI pixels. 
Now there is a caveat with using the DPI pixels code in that it requires a license. So you can use the hat with uh, the original settings with the two WS2811s and a single WS2801 uh, for free, that's inclusive. But if you switch to the DPI pixels code, then you need to pay a license fee uh, to get it enabled for more than 50 pixels per port. Now, because I'm only using 10 per port here, it doesn't matter here, but if you did want to, then you would need to get a license applied. So I'm gonna enable this hat and I'm gonna set up my start channels. Now I'm gonna leave the first 20 channels free uh, because I'm gonna be demoing it. We'll add DMX to the demo in a few moments and I've already written a tiny sequence that uses uh, the first 20 channels. So I'm gonna start my channel here at 21. And I've got 10 pixels. My next channel is gonna be 51 for, for 10. I'm going up in increments of 30 because I've got 10 pixels. Each pixel of course has red, green and blue blue, three channels, so that's 30 channels per string. So we've got 21, 51, eight, oh, 81, and 111. There we go, so that's the four outputs all configured, nice and simple. Now, if you were doing it in X lights, of course, you could configure them in there and push that way, but I'm just demonstrating how to do it manually here. So I'm gonna save that. And it's then gonna want an FPPD restart. So let's do that. There it goes. FPPD has restarted. So our four outputs are now configured we can now move on to display testing. So if I now go to status control and display testing, we can see that FPP is correctly set up for channels 21 through 140. And if I enable test mode, there we go. We've got all of our strings of pixels are busy doing their thing. So the pixel output is working nicely. Now that leaves us with only one other feature on this board that really needs testing, and that is the DMX out. So we have the small uh, RJ45 connector on the board, and I have a small demonstration uh, moving head fixture here. So let's get that plugged in. An XLR three pin plug, this fixture, and I've wired it up in accordance with the manual, uh, which is available uh, from Alan's site. So let's plug that in. There we go. And I need to give this prop some power. So let's plug that in. There we go, it's just resetting itself. And as soon as it's settled down, there we go, that looks like that's ready. So we can now configure DMX on the hat. So I'm gonna go back to input output setup and channel outputs. I'm gonna go for the other option. And I'm gonna go for add and set a type of DMX open. There we go. I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna tell it we're gonna send 20 channels out of the DMX. And then we need to set the port, which is gonna be TTYAMA0. There we go, so that's saved. I'm sure FPPD will want to reset again. Yep, it does. So let's do that. Here we go, DMX is now set up on our first 20 channels. Now we can't 
do a test in the same way with a moving head that we could with pixels by just chucking the, the data at it. But I've created a small sequence in X lights just to demonstrate this. So if I now play this sequence, the head should wake up and start doing what it's been asked to do. And there it goes. So it's busy doing its pan and tilt. We've got a green output. Oh, no, red now. We go red output. And there we are, we have a demonstration of DMX being driven directly from the Hanson Pi Hat. There it goes. So with DMX tested and working, uh, and if I go to display testing again, and, oh, it is gonna try and do stuff. Oh, it's going a bit mad. It doesn't like uh, having, pixel data launched at it, it's having a bit of a turn now. So I'm testing uh, channels one through 140 and it's, uh, it's driving the mover a little bit bonkers. So there we go. I think that sums up uh, the Hanson P28D Plus pixel hat uh, from Hanson Electronics. Uh, it's available, of course, from us here at Panels R Us uh, if you're in the UK. Australia, of course, Hanson Electronics. And if you're in the US, then Ken at Wired Watts has them in stock as well. So I look forward to seeing you on the next one. As usual, take care, have fun. See you next time.